So a moment ago we were talking about how, you know, it's about 757 lines of code, it's about like 98 hours or 89 hours or whatever of work that we've done. Here's a website that's interesting. How much to make an app.com? This is the question that people always ask. How much will you charge me to make my app? Now obviously, as I said, even if you go through the class, you did everything perfectly, you there's still there's still more to learn and the class could be longer but the the issue is uh, always attendance I'm kinda surprised you know we finished the class with about 18 people which uh, is close to how many I see oftentimes you know as, as low as 12 and 10 and such and 20 to 22 around that time and I'm always surprised especially now that it's a certificate class where you're gonna get something out of it before that, this class was personal development, so people dropped out all the time. Uh, so what I'm getting at is that if we wanted to have another class where we got even deeper and talked more about data-driven apps and servers and connecting to all of that, well, the class is going to get smaller and smaller. And technically, we need about 25 people to start a class. Uh, so I'm not saying we, all we need to do is get 25 people and we'll have a next class. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just yeah. saying that usually... The more people we have, the more secure a class is to even be offered. I bring up this website here because then people might know that you've taken this class and that you have some experience with making an app, and people ask you, how much can you charge me to make my app? This is a, a nice little tool. Have you ever wondered how much it would cost to develop an app for iOS or Android? We've created this handy calculator. So I'm going to go through a few of these steps. First of all, am I going to target Android, iOS, or both? Let's say we've got a lot of experience in Android, so I'll pick just Android. On the top right corner, it starts to tally how much this app may cost. So there's already $8,000 investment to make an Android-only version. Let me go back and say, actually, I want to target all the devices. Oops, 16000 Now, you might say, well, how do they get to that price? You, you'll see that later. But just as an idea, okay, I just want to stick with an Android app only at the moment. Do people have to log in? Are you going to have a way for people to log into your system? Some sort of email login system using social media, no login, or I don't know, maybe I'll add it later. Let's say, well, it sounds really cool for people to be able to use their Facebook to log into my app, so I want that. I turn that on. And then uh, the price is going to then go to $12,000 now. Let's say maybe I don't need that. So I'll go back and I'll say, I don't know. Maybe I'll add it later. You can change it. Do people create personal profiles? So this is gathering data, saving information and such. Yes, no, I don't know. Let's say, uh, no, we don't need that. So I'll skip that. And it's just going to go through and ask some things like, how will you make money from your app? Do you want to get paid up front, 99 cents at a time downloads? Do you want it to get set up so that people download your app, but then inside of your app they pay? No, you're giving it away for free, or I don't know. So you should be seeing that the more effort, the more work, the higher the price goes. Obviously, by setting it up that your app is free, it costs less to develop, it's less code, it's less effort. If I want to set it up for in-app purchases, that went from 8000 to 11000 Reviews, let's say I don't need that. Does your app need to connect with your website? This is pretty common here, that there's a web version and, and an app version, and the data should synchronize. As you're going through these steps, it might say, this means you'll need to make an API. It's how all your friendly apps talk to each other. At the moment, our app saves data only on the device. The class information is only saved to the device. When we want that to synchronize or go elsewhere, that costs more because it takes more effort to set up. I'm at 11,000, and if I decide that, yes, I want my data to be saved and transferable, it went up to 16,000. 16, How nice should your app look? So bare bones, stock, beautiful. We're, we're in the level kind of stock at the moment. 
uh, if you wanted it beautiful with even more customized graphics and alignment and all of that. We saw how CSS, we had to wrestle with it sometimes to get it to do what we wanted. So if I wanted, you know, a stock design from 16K, it goes to 21K. Do you need an app icon? Designing a quality app typically ranges from $500 to $2,000, but will help you stand out in the App Store. You've probably seen a lot of terrible app icons out there, and a lot of really good ones. So the good ones are going to cost money, too. Your app estimate, $25,000. So how did we get this estimate? And it just goes on to here. This is based on 30,000 app submissions to agencies, studios, and freelancers. This is supposed to be a ballpark of averages, not a real final cost. But oftentimes, this is also in terms of hourly rates, oftentimes at about $100 an hour. So at $100, all of the um, time spent, I'm going to divide that by 100, that's the time you might be spending on the app. As I said, this class um, was um, the time that, that we spent, think about that in those terms. So we had seven hours uh, times four times three, 84. So we had about 84 hours or so in this class. And if we're uh, trying to do something like what's in these examples, this is a lot of time and effort. This is for you learning how to do these things and then troubleshooting it. And obviously through most of the class, as we went on, I was guiding us. We had a goal to do from the very beginning, and I have notes. It looks like I had it off, off top of my head, but revealing the magic, I had notes. And we were all going toward a goal, and we got a result. If you're doing this brand new with a brand new idea, remember when we talked about wireframing and storyboarding and figuring out all these things. So that's not that's not a completely outlandish number, even though, you know, I've never seen twenty-five thousand dollars, but it is realistic. So make a classmate picture with this background. <laughs> yeah, we should stand all in front of yeah, it. Look at our twenty-seven thousand dollars. Our own rates. Yeah. Ready to get hired. <laughs> Maybe for fun we can go to the most, let, let me do this one more time and s put no on all of these. This will still be thousands because even the most basic setup. So even one of the I most like basic ones. Make it a hundred thousand, bro, come on. <laughs> <laughs> let's, see the, <laughs> let's see the most expensive one. I want both operating systems. I want full social media. I want content creation, upfront costs, reviews, super beautiful app and icon. There we go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll leave it here and then we'll come back and then we'll, yeah, we'll take a class photo. <laughs> So this is why it may be expensive to have to have an app because it's just we saw the time and the effort and the debugging and looking up the answer when it didn't work. Yeah, but it was like from the I wanted my app, you know, from forty it went to eighty one. So CSS basically cost that much. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's where the that's where the graphic design degree comes in to make these nice visual things. So this is why if you're your own developer, we can maybe wrangle the code pretty well, but our app doesn't look that nice because I don't have experience in graphic design. I don't have experience in Photoshop or whatever. Well, that's its own career. That's its own major and certificate. So the more of this that you know, the more you can do and get hired and charge those kinds of fees. So how do you sell your app? Is it like this We're going is to downstairs to Windows and it's like you're on our app. <laughs> How do you market yourself to make apps and all of that? You're, you're yeah, this is a site to help you to sell your app or just put on the bay or something like that. Um, this, is, um, this is part of the crew network, which is uh, for hiring freelancers. So 
there's this and other apps that you can go to. So crew.co is a place. It's like the old monster.com. You guys remember that one? You go there, you create a profile, you sell yourself as a developer. So they um, they have one of these marketplaces. There's another one called freelancer.com, which is related. That, okay, I have this experience. I want to make websites or make apps. I go to these websites and put myself there. And I have some friends that do that, that they get jobs out of these places. So this might be something to make a note of. Crew.co and freelancer.com are places where you can go and create a profile. I'm not quite sure about the rates and all of that if it's free to set up. I, I haven't had to use it recently, but some of my uh, colleagues have. And, and they go to these and then they... Um, there's one other one that I can't remember at the moment. You go here and you can sell your services. Graphic design, app design, um, video production, any of these skills that you may have. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a couple in a moment, yes. Specifically for mobile apps or just any? In mind, what I have is more for, for apps, okay. so I'll show those in a moment, and then we could see some other ones. So I'm going to put some notes in the network folder in a moment. So what I want to mention regarding our interfaces, uh, we use jQuery Mobile as um, as our interface, as our interface framework. We used we had these elements where we did data role equals page, and it's a page design, and we did uh, data dialog equals true, and it's a dialog box. So that was a way to build an interface. There's a couple of other ways that are pretty popular too. Uh, once you've learned what you've learned here, the only thing that you need to focus on perhaps is, is the design, the interface. So here's one that's pretty famous uh, called Ionic, uh, ionicframework.com. So this focuses on creating uh, interfaces for mobile apps. This is still you know, the visuals of it, jQuery Mobile, it's been around a while, it's very popular, but they haven't, they haven't updated, you know, the version 1.5 should have come out by now. We're using version 1.45. I've been teaching this for a few years. We were using version 1.2, they released 1.3, 1.4. They've kind of been stuck on version 1.4 for a little while, which is kind of odd. In the world of technology, they're constantly releasing versions. And jQuery Mobile is a global team, so I'm not quite sure what's happening internally with them, but other uh, frameworks have been catching up and surpassing, and this is a big this is a big one. This is a way to make nice looking interfaces for Android and iOS that feel a little bit more like an Android or iOS interface. So Ionic uh, is a free, beautiful, open source. Um, modern and all of that. The software or the concept is, is free, but they have a very cool, if you look around here somewhere, there's going to be the actual product that they sell you, which is a really simple builder. We had to write data role equals whatever, and we have to type all of the code to make the interface. The Ionic app lets you drag and drop elements to make an interface, and of course the code is there. 
that's the part that's not free. The actual, you know, how does Ionic work and all of that, all of that's free. But their cool little builder is, is not free. And somewhere here it'll say the price. This, of course, doesn't do the work of your app working. You know, this still um, requires that you have an app to do something. So, not quite seeing where exactly, but we should see... somewhere how much it costs. Okay, here we go. So kind of poking around further. Um, it looks like there is a dev version where you can make one project for free. And then there's the pro version, $24 per month, unlimited projects. And then enterprise version, don't even ask. So it's, uh, that's a price there. Monthly billing, annual billing. So $240 subscription per year to be able to use their Ionic Creator, which can save you a, a lot of time and effort. You know, if you if you manage to profit off your app, those 240 a, a year is not so bad. But uh, Ionic is a way to, to build apps that look uh, pretty nice. What they do is still up to you. What, what does my app do? Does it do databases? Does it connect to this and that? Do, do I save information? So that's still up to you. Um, another another one. Well, let me make put these in the notes. Interface creators Ionic. We have another one that I like called Onsen. Onsen, just like the Japanese hot baths, right, Miki? Onsen. Um, so we have what's the address? Onsen. <laughs> Onsen, uh, Onsen UI. There it is. Onsen.io. So here's another one. This is to make hybrid apps that look nice, nicer than jQuery mobile at the moment. Um, very modern. So I'll put that in the notes too. As a matter of fact, we can try out we can try out uh, Onsen right now. I, I do have it installed on these computers to try it out. So uh, let's take a little digression here. Uh, open up your command prompt. And let's go back to the desktop. I'm on the flash drive, so go to C colon to go back to the C drive and then CD desktop. Let's test drive Onsen for a moment. Um, C drive, colon, back to the C drive. And then CD desktop, go to the desktop. Onsen is part of a larger project called Monaka, where we, we have Cordova to do things. Uh, we have Cordova that creates a mobile project. Then we put jQuery mobile on top of it. Well, Onsen is like jQuery mobile. But then Manaka <coughs> is like Cordova. So if you type M-O-N-A-C-A -A, Monaka, press enter, this then tells you, okay, we've got Monaka installed on these computers. I'll show you how to install it in a moment. But there it's, it's installed, and it says this is a way for us to create Onsen designs based on Monaka infrastructure. So that's kind of bundling together uh, Cordova and jQuery mobile, kind of. So we'll have the same sort of thing. We type Monaka create. Well, the possibilities are right here. Create 
debug, login, all of that. What Manaka has a big thing about it is that there's also, you create an account there and they sell their service where they will compile your app in the cloud. They will compile it on, for like, for iOS. I don't have a Mac, that was my big detriment. I don't have a Mac to create the iOS version of my app. If you buy a subscription with Manaka, you will be able to use their cloud system to compile your app to the to the to iOS, for example. So we can try this. Here is typical usage. Manaka create project. That sounds familiar. Cordova create my app. Let's try that. Manaka create test. Enter. Now it's a little bit different, but once I did, uh, once I did that, normally uh, on Cordova it was just Cordova create a test. Well, with Manaka, okay, now choose a category. I can create Ionic, but let's skip that one. Go uh, select Unsend UI. Just press Enter. Where the little arrow is at right there. Press Enter. Okay, so then I've got these sorts of templates. A tab bar template, a splitter design with navigation minimum. It's just, we can obviously create as many of these as we want. Let's just keep it on the tab bar to see what it looks like. So press enter on the tab bar template. This is going to connect to the server, download the supporting files. Okay, so that's going to get done. Type CD test or whatever you called your thing and then run these commands. Monaco preview to view it in the browser, debug it, run it, uh, do a build so it runs on devices, upload it to the Monaco cloud so that they can compile it not for free. So CD test. We created a project up here, Monaco create test. So CD test, and inside of the test folder, try it in Monaco preview. That'll open up the web browser. You have to what? Let me check one moment. It should have done it. It might just be taking a while. So this, this created an app here. Super simple, nothing's going on really, but it already created a top header and a footer about it. That's what you Well, this interface is Onsen, and if we, if you created that test uh, folder on the desktop, you can look inside of it, and it looks very familiar. There's a WW folder. Even deep down, it uh, it's still deep, deep down. It's still Cordova. Cordova is this foundation that has really expanded and a lot of people have done like their version up because Cordova is open source. So the Monaco company, they said let's take that code and let's change it a little bit and make our version of it. And they're allowed to because it's open source. And they published it and then you can make a Monaco powered Cordova project basically. And then Monaco said well we need an interface. We need a way to make designs. So we've got Onsen and that's what lets you create the design. If you look inside of the WW folder, you're going to see in HTML and CSS and JavaScript files and everything. So all of that is editable in Notepad++. It does rely on a, a lot more on, on jQuery, or JavaScript, that is. Uh, what I like about jQuery Mobile, even though it's in the name jQuery, it still relies a lot on HTML. You create sections or divs or whatever and add data roles. Some of these more modern ones, like Ionic and Onsen, rely a lot more on JavaScript uh, to, to create content. Notice on the HTML file, 
there's some JavaScript and it sets up pages, title, element, .inner HTML, my app page one. This JavaScript here is setting the code to appear on the, on the actual elements. And notice now the tags are completely different. Of course, it's a different project. But here, instead of having data role page, you have ONS page. This is an onsend tag. That makes no sense unless you've got onsend, unless you're using Manaka. So this is going to create a tab linking to your tab to HTML. So brand new thing to learn. This is not free. Uh, this one is free. What's not free is if you want to compile it, if you want to do, you know, Manaka build in their in their cloud system. That's the part that's not free. But learning how all of these tags, that's all free. And using their tags, that's all free. And using the command prompt like we've done before, Manaka build in my device, that's free. But I don't have a Mac. I want to compile it for Macs. I buy their service and then I can compile on a Mac. Yes. Uh, how does our computer, or how do we know? No. Well, that's a really good question. That's the question that a lot of developers have about which what which one should I do because there's so many versions. For those of you that took the feud class, uh, you probably learned Bootstrap in there, or what did you learn in there? Yeah. Bootstrap. So. So those are, that's again, how do I do it? There's no wrong answer, really. It's learn how, to, how one works and, and use it the best that you can. Uh, the problem is that I start to see so many other possibilities, and I like this, and I like that, and I like this, and then I never get anything done because I don't focus on which one, which one to focus on. So there's no wrong answer, but... Explain your one more features and have more following or more features or both. I like the features on both, but I think Ionic has more following. Yeah, a lot of times that's what happens. The, the project that's been around longer has more f adherence. I think you know jQuery Mobile, that one has a lot also, but they're kind of stumbling that they haven't released a new version, and these other guys are surpassing them in features. So um, this, this example here doesn't do very much. This is the second page. This is the first page. But here's a quick interface. I didn't even have to do anything except choose my template at the beginning, and I made that. So that's something for you to play with. Let's look at it. I haven't looked at it very recently, but can you say anything about it? It's like we don't need to configure, we don't need to download all this stuff. If using that, mobile app, that thing. Yeah, that one, middle, mobile platform, the very bottom. Start a free trial. What what are the prices like? We can have so thirty day free trial. I already walked through some examples of Bible. And how do you like it? Mm, it seems like yeah, I did use cloud, like build through the cloud. I don't need to go through. They uh, they have two like a hybrid is based on Cordova, another is based on the, the native native one. There's two choice. If, like, I'm working through the hybrid example, and it's pretty cool. It is focused on your developer. You don't need to worry about the underlying mm -hmm. framework. You set up, configure, this stuff. I didn't see a configure.xml file. But somewhere, probably you have to set that maybe in the cloud dashboard or somewhere because you have oh, to. Oh, the example, I didn't see the configure data. Just index HTML, I didn't, didn't see the configure data, data XML. Hmm. 
it, it's probably taken care of somewhere, but yeah, it's abstracted. So I'll put that over here. It's not much of an interface. It's more of a um, you know full development system. So we'll make a note right here. Uh, so these are some uh, ways to make interfaces, ways to go through the development process. We did Cordova through the command prompt, and it works, but you have to do the command prompt. So there's more graphical versions. Telerik is one way. Uh, there's also uh, PhoneGap. Let's check this one out. So PhoneGap.com. I've said before that when we look up information or tutorials, there might be a tutorial how to do this in PhoneGap. And pretty much, I said PhoneGap is synonymous with, with Cordova, but we'll see one difference why there is a big difference. If you go to PhoneGap.com, PhoneGap is basically Adobe's version of Cordova. That's the short answer. Um, so Adobe, from Photoshop and Dreamweaver and all of that, they have their version. It's PhoneGap. And they have the same sort of thing where in the command prompt I would do phone gap, create, whatever. I have the command prompt. So you say, well, what's the difference? I'll just use Cordova. The big difference with Adobe phone gap is that they also have a cloud comp compilation service. A service where you create an account and there's a free and a paid versions. And then you can upload your code to their dashboard and they will compile it into the Android APK into the iOS IPA file, into the Windows file. So Adobe will compile your app to all the devices. Again, the problem that I had, I've been saying we can create an iOS version of our app, but the big problem is we need iOS hardware, we need Mac hardware. There's a lot of these out here that you pay them, and they have Macs, and they'll compile your app. You still can't get away from, however, paying the $99 developer fee from Apple. You still have to pay that, you get your developer certificate, you submit it to Adobe, and they will create the iOS version of your app based on the same code. So under Products, so you say, what's the difference? There's the, there's the command line interface, the free thing. There's the desktop version, although it's still in beta. They haven't changed it, and you need version, you need Windows 8 and up for that. So there's a graphical interface here. Instead of typing it by hand, you have a graphical interface. And then you've got PhoneGap Build, which is their online system. Take the pain out of compiling mobile app development. Simply upload your code, and we'll package them for you. Get App Store ready apps without the headache of maintaining native SDKs, without downloading the, the software and keeping it up to date, they will do it. Pricing. What? No, um, I, I mention it, but we never, we don't really use it because of the the big thing about it is that to get the most out of it, it's not free. So we compile for you. That's the big thing. Multiple platforms. See if we can find a price for this. Here we go. So you get the free plan. You can have, well, all of these have unlimited open source apps, meaning if you don't mind your code becoming open source and everyone can look at it, you get unlimited apps. But if obviously I'm making an app for my company with trade secrets, I don't want everyone to see my code. I only get one private app with the free plan. I can get 25 with the paid ones. My app maximum can be 50 megs, or 100, or a gig. Can we use all the Cordova plugins? Yes. Can we use the third-party plugins? Yes, like the social sharing. <coughs> can you upload manually plugins on the free? No. You can only use publicly available ones. $9.99 a month. So, you know, about $120 a year to be able to use the Adobe version of Cordova, which is PhoneGap. Yeah, but if we have Adobe Suite, it will be free for us, so you can get your Adobe ID. Possibly. 
Uh, I'm not sure if this is an extra cost on top of whatever Creative Cloud costs. I sort of think that it's not more extra. I think it's included, probably. Especially if you're buying like the bigger Creative Cloud Adobe Suite. So somewhere in the details it'll tell you the details. But the idea is that we provide our raw files, Adobe then compiles it to all the platforms. And then I still go to the app stores to publish. I would still go to the Google Play Store and create and create my account there for $25, one-time fee, and then upload my apps there. I would go to the Apple App Store and pay $99 a year and sell my apps on the App Store. I would pay the $25 on the Windows Store <coughs> and start to sell my Windows apps. And then I'm paying also Adobe $120 a year to package my apps. So the way we did it is the most free way of all, but we saw the problems. We saw that we need the software set up. We need to learn the commands. We need to troubleshoot what, why doesn't it want to compile today? Well, Manaka is trying to simplify that. Uh, Adobe is trying to simplify that. Telerik is trying to simplify it. They all have a solution. And guess what? They're all not free because this stuff costs money. These servers cost money to run 24 hours a day to compile people's apps. But if you're willing to pay those prices, then they're not super expensive. And if you do get rich on one of your apps, then that was a, that was a good investment. So for uh, like the Windows, like iOS, like we did for Android, we had a JKS that we had to sign with yeah. our APK. So yeah. with an iOS, you would get another equivalent JKS exactly. for iOS. Same thing with Google, same thing with Windows. Exactly. That need to marry with the file when it's uploaded to you. Exactly, yeah. Program. And it's all in the interface here. Once I get my iOS, I believe it's a .p12 file. Once I get that file from 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 the, my Apple account, once I get that and I log in here, I upload my code and that P12 file and they will combine it. Compile it. So it would be great that we were able to do this in class, but again, we need the hardware. We need we need Macs. But here I'm giving you a solution, a couple of solutions. You're able to do it um, through these systems. Another one, which is uh, which is in between. So we've got the Cordova way, which is completely the manual way. And we've got the Adobe, which, which is the completely automated way. In the middle, we have another way. Let's try this. Go to visualstudio.com. How many of you have ever used Visual Studio before? No one. Okay. So Visual Studio, they just celebrated 20 years. This is a uh, an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, a way to make... Uh, projects. And traditionally, for a long time, what you use Visual Studio for was to create Windows apps only. But with the rise of mobile, it's kind of surprising a big entrenched company like Microsoft is embracing open source in various degrees. And one is that they've got Visual Studio, which for a long time was hundreds of dollars. There's a version now totally free for smaller developers like us. So it's Visual Studio Community Edition. This is totally free to make apps for all the devices. And the difference between this and Cordova is that it's a nice graphical user interface. File menu open. You go up to the menu and do, you know, project build. Uh, you have an actual interface to, to work with instead of commands that you have to memorize. And they've done a good job of uh, putting it open source and usable and all of that. And I've been experimenting with it to, to eventually overhaul this class to, to do Visual Studio. Uh, it's still, but it's a big download and all of that. And they just released 2017. Visual Studio 2017, they released it maybe a month ago. So now everyone's got it check their documentation that it still works. And they do have a Mac version, but the problem with the Mac version, the Mac version is still in beta. 
this was the big thing holding me back from starting to use Visual Studio in these classes, is that, that there was no Visual Studio for Mac. So people would come to the class getting ready to do it at home, there's no Visual Studio on the Mac, up until very recently. The problem still, though, is on the Mac version, it doesn't support JavaScript. It's, uh, it's uh, I believe it's C++. So, C++, you have to learn a whole new language. Like, I don't know, that I can't teach you. So, at the moment, the beta version of Visual Studio for Mac still relies on C++. The Windows version is everything we learned, but in a nice interface. You see your code, you can debug quickly in the, in the IDE and all of that. And I hope they do that, they activate that for the Mac version, and then both will be on par, and then it will be a lot easier to teach, because I have to balance that. People are coming in with a variety of devices. I obviously want to make sure it works as best for everyone, but that's a big detriment so far that if you come in and say, sorry, you have to have a Windows computer to take this class. And yes, it is more work via Cordoba command line, but it, at least it works on the Mac. It's just more work. So I would look into those. Visual Studio and all of these notes that I have here, so <coughs> any questions as we as we wrap up. So when will you teach the server side like do you plan to teach the server side later like connection? And VB like MVB? The short answer is that there's no plans for that, but the long answer is it depends on how many people we can get to sign up for the class. To go to that next level, we, we need... Separate class, like, because uh, we like, can do, like, uh, over another session, especially for that server-side connection, like, if they have server-side development, can do open a separate session for for someone else they get a certificate to attend this class. Because we need to go we need to go through the study for HTML, CSS, to exactly. right? I don't doubt that eventually that'll happen. Yeah. But like I said, this is the first time that we offer this level of the class. Yes. And we had this is demand like demand. It, it's all about the demand, yeah. yeah. It's all about um, like to open a session like open class uh, addressing this like, server side data accessing issue for that. Um, it's a possibility, but again, it, the the catalog and the schedule and the room assignments are set up in a, in advance to yes. you know to ask to try to get that without time in advance is even more difficult. But you already have so many classes like. Previously, you have students attend this, so I think they have some pool. Possibly. A few requests, and uh, they have like 25. Of all these basic class, like uh, you teach, I think 25 people is very easy to feel to address this. It's, it's a very strong possibility, yeah. It would be, it would be starting yes, to... No, like if this future yeah that's why uh, did you did put your email on that form that I submitted that I gave you guys a while ago right to, to put to give me your email so that you're in my email list yeah it was a while ago but let me put it let me put it in the folder again uh, you probably probably did it uh, using web service or something to actually like uh, access the data in the needs or to connect to the data center, mm -hmm. something like that. So make sure that in, in the network folder you have gone to that link to just give me your email so that I have your email in there to to contact you guys. Using you to one step you studio using Yes, that's what I really want to do, but what really held me back was that there's no Mac version of it, and I want 
and I want there to be one, but I might have to. Once it's out of beta, because it's still in beta on the Mac. I did check it out. I borrowed a Mac and I and, and I checked it out, but it only does right now C++ programming. So whatever we learned here wouldn't work on the Mac version. If people using like uh, laptop, like a computer, they can download some virtual environment or window yeah. and run the virtual yeah. studio IDE. There are ways yeah. to do it, it just depends how complex to make it for people and how much they understand it. So that's always the difficulty of public education, that people have such levels of experience that I would like to be teaching to these levels up here, but I need to be in the middle. I, don't, I can't be so low, but I have to be in the middle for more people because of a public education. <coughs> Well, I guess as we wind, we wind down there, uh, you know, uh, we've come away and there's still a way to learn, but at this point you, you've decided either this is interesting, I want to keep learning, or I don't like it, let me switch to an art major. So uh, thank you for taking the class and uh, hope to see you in a future class.